So I'm Irini and I'm based at the Victoria and Albert Museum, as Laura said, and Waterman, a gallery in uh, West London. And um, I set up the digital programs team at the v &A in 2008 and then started curating the exhibition program um, with new me media arts at Waterman in 2010. So, um, like, since, since I started um, working, like, at both places, like, since the, the, the beginning, I, was, I, was, I have been involved very much with the make maker culture, but also with uh, working with technologies and uh, engineers, uh, artists, designers. So I was very interested in kind of um, try and experiment a little bit with a with the museum and uh, like very traditional format and the gallery format to see how we can bring people together to uh, collaborate, but also to um, talk, uh, discuss critical, uh, like have critical discussions about technology and the impact of technology, um, but also um, have like give opportunities to uh, engage with communities of makers, but also who do not identify as like makers or designers etc and try to work together and bring in uh, professionals together with um, like the general like public so um, so this is how um, programs like the digital futures came up and I'm just going to talk through about uh, this and a few examples about the work that we've been doing so um, so Digital Future started as um, some sort of like a networking and ex exchange and collabora collaboration uh, enabling platform. And it was about, uh, and still is, about bringing people together from different um, backgrounds, like, uh, as I said before, like from uh, humanities, but also engineering, making, design, art, etc. all working with uh, or interested in technology and uh, impact of technology in like culture and society so um so the idea behind the the the, the project was to uh, not to have like to bring in professionals like on a stage as you know like the actors but to get everybody around and start collaborating and working together so um some some of the um the projects that i want to kind of focus on is this uh, international but also like national exchange and uh, collaborative uh, work which was very much looking at uh, like common problems like I don't know like in cities or environment or how we work etc or in our uh, homes and try to um, bring in like design but also professional like professionals who work with engineering and making and just to to see how we could um, Ma how could we could make things more relevant to uh, to people to li and to everyday life so so we had um, one of these uh, when we started these projects like one of the first ones that we did was this um, uh, the one that you see the slide up here and it was uh, actually at an international level and it was uh, an exchange between um, Mexico City and Dundee and then uh, eventually London and we were very interested in um, we were very interested in um, to, to have discussions about like smart cities and innovation and uh, to to understand a little bit about you know how um, you know people in communities they uh, what uh, how they understand innovation or, or how they invent things in their communities in their homes etc so um, so one thing that I should say that I should have said is that one one important like uh, part of how the pro whole program works and the, this project in particular is about like slow making and slow technology and slow uh, processes rather than um, you know like looking at um, like fast and consuming uh, technologies and uh, and objects and products. So, so it's very much about these uh, collaborations that come together and then we develop work, we exchange skills and knowledge and socializing and then we develop work over time. So what, we, what we've done with this project was that um, we had uh, a group of um, people from the UK who uh, traveled to Mexico City and uh, they, um, and then and at the same time there was uh, like an, an open call for like communities in Dundee. And the whole idea, we first we wanted to gather uh, data about like how, what people do in their every everyday life in the city and the space where they live. So they started collecting um, over like um, the period of a month um, with, different, um, wi with, with different institutions uh, in Dundee and Mexico City, um, like 
different like um, yes d data about what they like from their everyday journey to work to uh, like uh, rubbish collection to uh, science in the city uh, food everything and then we started sharing this um, uh, this material between the two cities so um, and eventually what happened is that we had uh, a long weekend which is not really a very long time to for these uh, two um, cities, the communities, both cities, to come together online and uh, and start working together. So, so first of all, in um, we started with the Bitacora de Hacedores in uh, the binacle of uh, binacle of makers in uh, in, Mex in Mexico City, which is a network of um, of makers and engineers and hackers. And it's uh, they what they do is that the purpose is to help. Um, citizens and users in Mexico City to, to understand how to best use their resources and spaces to, to make things and change things. So, um, so one, the, the picture on the, uh, that you see there of the group on the street was when we, we had walking tours in both uh, spaces, like in both cities, in Mexico City and Dundee at the same time. And another reason for that was that we wanted to, first we wanted to uh, find out more about like the make the makers who are not really identifying as makers, but like the artisans, people who invent things in the in the cities, but they are uh, like slowly lost, and um, and also to understand a little bit more about at an international level about uh, things that happen in Mexico City and things that happen in in Dundee, which are very very different, like 150. Uh, uh, citizens in Dundee, uh, like with and 22 million uh, in in Mexico City, but uh, we wanted to focus on similar ideas. So, for example, I don't know if you can see that slide at the top here. So, some of the to of the topics that we were interested in was uh, from uh, environmental issues, waste, uh, food, uh, climate change, sustainability, etc. And um, so they spent uh, the whole weekend working together and have live uh, connections between the, the two cities, presenting work at each other and talking about the cities. And there was a, a series of projects that came out of that, which then we presented at the V&A. And this included like from guides to uh, unknown uh, places in cities which are going beyond like what we um, what the, uh, the, 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 the standard things that we would find on a guide as somebody who is visiting a, a place or um, like going after like stereotypes or but also um, creating devices, for example, like, uh, yes, uh, th uh, talking about transport issues uh, at uh, both places, but also uh, waste, etc. And then there were uh, a few projects that happened in like to um, try and connect the two cities like this one with a pink uh, picture there, which is actually a group of um, like uh, of um, uh, people, the visitors from the UK with the Mexicans uh, who took part in the events uh, via the open call. And um, they built this abstract device to, to connect the two venues that we were using in Dundee and Mexico City. And uh, so, they, um, so the device was measuring light levels in Dundee and then uh, it was outputting levels, the levels in, in that space there in Mexico City, was, which is the memorial room. Uh, it's, a, it's, an, um, it's a massive space in the center of Mexico City. Um, so like just going like continuing on this idea of like trying to um, work with um, bringing together professionals with uh, with communities and um, understanding you know just having this exchange um, another uh, project that we did which is kind of a continuing in a way from the previous one that I mentioned um, was the um, the Unbox Caravan in uh, in, um, in Ahmedabad in India and Unbox Caravan was uh, a project that was initiated by Unbox Labs, who are a community of designers, makers, engineers uh, in, uh, in technologies in, um, in Delhi. And they have been doing really amazing work with um, working with people across the country and uh, doing street events and engaging them in, um, in, ma in hacking technologies and uh, also every like uh, IoT, but community led IoT uh, projects. So, uh, so this was, um, so Mozilla was also part of this event and uh, British Council, which meant that they brought together people from across India and also from the UK and the US. And, um, 
So there was, uh, so we worked, we th this was an even slower event, which was great. It was, it, it took um, place over two weeks. Uh, which meant that we had plenty of time to go around to uh, meet makers, to meet, to meet artisans in different areas of Ahmedabad, like from textiles to pottery to uh, printmaking, etc. And then we sort of did mini collaborations with them. We started visiting them every day, then spending time with them, and then started uh, building things with them and understanding their traditional ways of making, but also how we could bring what they make and uh, in contact with like young uh, generations and in particular with the uh, National Institute of Design in Ahmedabad which has an amazing uh, space an, an amazing department of interaction design but also technology so we worked with the students there and the so the project this the pictures that you see there is from um, uh, work that we did with the students but also with community groups so for example the one uh, at the far right there is uh, um, it's, it's a connected it, it was called connected pole and Paul um, poles in Ahmedabad are the uh, kind of um, there are spa areas in the city where people from the similar from the same families religion or professions or uh, artisans live together so they are clusters of and um, so so this was they were exploring the um, so one of the things that we were exploring at the uh, connected pool was uh, what what makes a connected home or what we were talking about internet of things and how this is relevant to communities and people and um, how uh, we can talk about connectivity in homes but also with communities and um, what and of course the main thing that is was central in our work and it still is was this idea of like um, that a connected home or a connected community or a space or a city etc is about like conversations about people interacting and uh, and about emotions so it was very uh, like it was very important to keep that human uh, factor in the in the middle so this was um, th this was a way for women in the same polls to uh, send messages to each other like and uh, and communicate recipes etc so it was a very low tech um, project and um, and then just going on after this, there was another step to this, the same uh, idea of like, uh, again, with uh, how Internet of Things becomes relevant to, to communities. Uh, in uh, Anstruther with uh, Mozilla Open uh, IoT, uh, Open IoT Studio. And, um, and again, that was where we worked with like, uh, it w I was not so much involved with that, uh, with that project there, but more as a kind of observer. But uh, we are doing another phase at the VNA, which I'm going to talk about it in a minute. So, so the idea with, with that was to work with, the, in Anstruther, with the, Fisher, with the local fishermen, with young people and farmers, and um, pro like understand like how they, would, how they use technology, but also how they would like to use it as well in the future. So for example, a group of teenagers uh, hacked an old phone box and they, cause they wanted to create a network for, for, for them in Anstruther where they could communicate and share ideas and share events, etc. cetera. And, um, and then we put like a, a publication together. So, so the people from all these projects, like some of them are coming over to the VNA in September on the 24th and 25th where um, we're doing an open design sprint which is basically we w it's we want to talk about the future of engineering or like a shared vision about what we want the future of technology and engineering and digital future to be and it's going to be um we're, we're going to have like a, a very open prototyping event but also discussions and hopefully come up with a, some sort of um ideas at the end and manifesto so I thought I should just share also a few other examples of the same from the same uh, series of the project on uh, again on collaborative and international work, and one big area of um, the uh, of uh, themes that I've been exploring at the um, wi wi with this uh, with digital futures is electronic waste, and because um, electronic waste is like uh, is a f one of the fastest growing st waste streams, uh, especially in the um, in the global north, as we say, including the UK. So, um, 
So we had, um, so we have been doing like several gatherings talking about uh, sustainability, but also waste and uh, and, and design. And uh, this was a project that we wanted to uh, talk about, like to to talk about um, the exchange between countries who import and export um, electronic waste, but also to um, to to talk to bring up the uh, per the perspective from like in terms of like workers uh, rights at the uh, at dump sites for example in uh, in different countries like in asia or uh, or south america or like or africa but also in um, in in terms of like in f wa waste waste re e-waste recycling sites as well in uh, in 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 europe and uh and, and south america so uh, so what we've done is that we brought together a group of uh, that was led by um daniel Plozer and um we brought together a group of um, scientists, uh, artists, uh, technologists, but also environmentalists as well. And we did a, a series of like workshops at uh, e-waste recycling sites with people working there. And uh, so we we did some we spent some time with them working uh, at this at the sites in Nigeria and Hong Kong as well, and in. Uh, in the UK, in, in Kent at um, uh, Sweep, and um, and then we had like uh, conversations and public discussions about all these uh, exchanges and, and and research, and talking about like um, uh, production and consumption, but also as I said before, like uh, people at the sites where uh, electronic recycling um, is taking place. So, so one of these outcomes was um, a, an event that happened with the Restart project, and I, I'm sure some of you will be familiar with the Restart project. And it's uh, it's a great uh, collective in, uh, in based in London, and the, at Make University, and they have been um, running these repair sessions around the country, but also uh, they have links with uh, people abroad as well, and they also uh, help people to. Um, set up their own repair uh, sessions so so we we kind of brought in them we brought them into the vna and then we had like a, a half a day repair uh, session but also uh, we wanted to um to get to to un we wanted to 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 have discussions with what happens like outside like with uh, in in africa for example in particular in uh, in kenya in nairobi so we had this live where there are um, loads of groups so instead of you know looking at the um we just wanted to go over this uh, vision of the uh, of the western world of africa as just simply a place where you know people dump usually the electronic waste but look at their inventiveness and uh, all the um these repair workshops that they have and um the the, um, sus the sustainable way that they have to um, to uh, recycle uh, e-waste. So so we were um, talking about this utopian vision of like zero zero waste um, if that can ever happen and uh, understand a little bit how it works in uh, in a place like Nairobi, for example. So we had these live discussions with the um, uh, the repair shops over there, and then we had uh, the uh, the actual repair workshop at at the VNA. Um, and just continuing on this uh, like theme of e-waste, um, it was uh, that was um, a project that I did at not at the Vienna but in the in the other space where I'm working at Watermass, and I was very interested in like using the idea of like the the, the space, the gallery as a space to. Um, to bring people in and um, make it again like an active space and uh, talk about important issues, like in this case uh, e-waste. So um, I don't know if you are familiar with um, Paul Granzon's uh, work. He works a lot with uh, robotics and uh, recycled material, and uh, he has been um, this this uh, a series of uh, workshops that he's been running called Rexops. And uh, what we've done was that we, this is what we wanted to do with the gallery space to create like an ongoing Rexop. So Rexops is um, are this series of events where um, you invite people to uh, use a combination of recycled technologies and open source electronics and cre and build things. But what we actually did was that we wanted to um, 
to use to find, first of all, to give people an idea of how much e-waste we have around us. So we uh, brought in the gallery an, a mountain of e-waste that we found at Waterman's, but also in the local area. And we invited people to bring their own uh, e-waste and some of them did. And also we invited like locals, because that was a series of um, a, a project that we did with um, lo local residents. And uh, so, so there were quite, a f there were loads of people who have been working with like um, uh, bike, uh, bikes uh, repairs or like building machines, etc. So it was great to have them in and then build and create things together. So, so it was like an e-waste upcycling unit in, in the space for, um, for a couple of months. And uh, these were the two, the, the this is not the work that they created. This was work that Paul Granzon brought in the space, which is very typical of what he does. So, so there is um, here, first, the first one is, th this is called biting machine, and it's like a recycled uh, VCR and, uh, and a scooter, electric uh, scooter. And what it does is that it has uh, sensors and people, it, it kind of fall, tries to find people and uh, like actually go after them and bite them. And it, so, so it's a, so he's very interested in these relations between like m um, human and machine, but also and tensions as well. And the other one is works in a similar way. The auto the autonomous robotic gun again it scans the space and then when it finds people, then it shoots at them. And um, we unfortunately we had to uh, to take this down after a few days because it was somebody tried to. Uh, to take it from the gallery and they, they probably thought it was a real gun I don't know <laughs> so um, and these these are some of the a couple of examples of what people built during the um, these rec shops in the gallery and the, it, it's uh, a geranium um, life support system and uh, so 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 we used like uh, broken laptops and um, to create that um, like thing of the top of the geranium, which is uh, covered by daylight uh, approximation LED lighting system, and um, and then there is a, there was a sensor in the pot to to detect the dampness in the soil and um, and actually water the plant, and the plants had to the plants had to survive in the gallery without light and um, for almost six weeks, and they did at the end, and but. So, so what we had, which you can't see in this picture, was a pump um, uh, to, which was ac to activate it for the, to water the, the plant, and the pump was activated via a pedal, um, uh, a pedal system that was built in the gallery as well, and it was uh, it was like a hand made, it was like a bike generator which was built with um, uh, help from the guys, uh, the guy who had this bike repair uh, place. And so it was actually visitors in the space they had to, uh, si to, to cycle to, uh, to water the, the actual plant. And it did, it did work. Um, so something else, um, I'm not keeping track of time, so maybe you can, okay. <laughs> so, so something um, else that goes a bit um, in, a, in a more kind of uh, futuristic scenario of in terms of like, not, not exactly waste, but also environmental issue issues is this project that um, uh, has been developed is ongoing and has been developed in collaboration with uh, different universities across the UK and uh, it's um, called this project called cleaning land for wells and it's from the EPSRC um, it, yeah it's like a, it's funded by the EPSRC and uh, they have been working the scientists involved in the in the project they have Put, they have brought on board these uh, artists, these designers who have, uh, who have been um, working a lot in the Digital Futures program at the V&A, and uh, they, they wanted, they were interested to find a way to come to help the public understand what they were doing. So, so this um, cleaning land for wealth is basically a project where they have been uh, interested in doing research to understand how we can recover. Uh, valuable nanometals from from the soil. So, um, so Michael Barton and Itziconita, who have been working, they have been collaborating with them. They came to the V&A and they've built these instruments and to um, that kind of explain the process of uh, the, uh, of that the scientists are using 
to recover the uh, the nanometals, but also uh, like bi the biotechnology behind that. So, but also it's um, there is another phase to the project which is coming back to the VNA in September again, and it's looking at a more kind of like speculative and um, like future scenario of how uh, if eventually you know we have to you know through the food to consume uh, all these. Um, substances like then how our you know I if there is um if we can look at the possi like the extreme possibility of like redesigning like organs in the body you know to help uh, to help re to, to help us digest for example these um uh, these substances um so it's a speculative uh, project um i'm not how much time i've got five minutes okay so um so maybe I'll go, okay, so uh, just a couple, of, sorry, let me see, I've got, okay, so I've got three more slides anyway. So, so another, another um, area that we have been uh, interested in and looking at is uh, data, and, but also uh, like currencies and how we understand currencies and in, the, uh, in a digital world. So we've done, we had uh, Heidi Heinder on, um, for six months uh, to work with um, with uh, with the museum, with uh, different uh, professionals around the museum, but also with the public, and we we just wanted to have discussions about um, about don yeah, about the um, the value of public organisations and arts organisations, and also um, you know how we can understand. Um, like for example, the value of like art and design, and when people come through the doors in in a public space like the V&A. So, so we've been um, so in order to get like to have these quite quite abstract discussions, we designed a series of prototypes uh, and wearables and that uh, people could use to make um, a donation to the V&A. So uh, that this was uh, like a series of um, of, of gloves or like um, uh, bads, and there was a, a tap dancing machine as well, and it was based on different gestures. So we were looking at interaction as a way of uh, like transaction transacting money, but also uh, uh, looking at the ideas of like, um, for example. Uh, yeah, like f how how we can go beyond like the money as an object. How we can look at societies, for example, who exchange money without like money by exchanging different, um, you know, uh, products or like um, thinking of uh, diff alternative ways of of exchange, basically, and and value. So so what what how this worked? That was like a basic like a basic like RFID. Um, uh, de device with scanner, so it was every time you did a handshake with someone or a high five. So the idea was that we would use that at the shop or the cafe at the V&A, and that was a way for people to actually give pay for their uh, for the make a transaction and um, uh, or donate money to the museum. So we had a series of um, events bringing in uh, economists at the uh, at the museum as well and also outside, but also uh, people who work with. Um, let's say, yeah, hacking finance or money or interested in kind of, you know, looking at alternative ways of, um, of, of exchange and, and transactions. So we did a series of prototyping events, building or understanding, you know, how we could imagine different systems in, in these kind of scenarios. And um, this is an, an ongoing project. So we are hoping that um, the prototypes are still there and running, but we're hoping that we can eventually build an alternative donation system for the museum that people can use. I don't know if it's going to be based on these uh, wearables or like prototypes, might become something different, but that was just like an initial uh, way to give us an idea of what might uh, come up, um, wh what we might, we might come up with. Um, so uh, just to go back to the, um, to, and just to close also to this um, using the, the museum, for example, as a space to have these critical discussions about making, but also outside the museum, not necessarily at the V&A always. Um, 
as I said, I was involved with a group of people in the ma Mini Maker Fair in, uh, in London, the Elephant and Castle Mini Maker Fair a few years ago. And, um, but after doing a couple of um, uh, events, the uh, uh, fairs, we thought that it was really important to, do, to start up um, like a space where we could have uh, these very uh, important discussions about maker culture and talk about, for example, gender, but also like, div like diversity, activism, uh, etc. So, so we set up Maker Assembly, which is a gathering that we have been um, doing now since uh, 2000, uh, October 2015. And um, the, uh, the next one, uh, the, sorry, the, the last one that we did was a f just two days, three days ago in Sheffield. And uh, this is where this is coming from. And I'm sorry, it's really bad, this slide. But um, we've been talking about um, activism and um, consequences and home. So for example, how um, l looking at from historical maker movements to the present day, how tech craft uh, and making have come together or have been used as, a t as tools for change. But also um, uh, exploring like what people do and what we can do in the future to make an impact. And finally, uh, we were looking at the idea of like home as well, but in terms of like, um, you know, community, but also like small groups and how people use uh, uh, making a tech to take control over their lives, their communities, their space, etc. which is again is linked to the work that we've been doing with the open IoT as well. Uh, so this, is, this slide is from a timeline that we started doing at the event in Sheffield. And basically we're trying to, it's very long now, it's, it's four meters and it's going to grow even longer. But we are trying to, we were inviting people at the, um, in Sheffield at the Maker Assembly event to help us put like, create this timeline of important, um, of um, uh, like, what happened like from when they remember or any information they they have to, to create like a crowdsource um, crowdsource history of of maker uh, culture in the uk but also have included important thing events from uh, everywhere around the world so so this is um, just in is an on, on paper right now but we're hoping to put it on on github or just do like an online version where we could uh, gather more information and uh, have this timeline available on the on the Maker Assembly website, and um, and share it with everyone. And um, the next event that we're doing will be in Manchester, uh, and it will be just before the Crafts Council Makeshift Conference. So it's an uh, it's uh, it will be an opportunity to bring a different crowd to the uh, to the space over there and discuss like uh, uh, have discussions parallel to the to the conference. Um, and just to, to close here, we've been, um, so we've been trying to have like different groups coming into the museum, but going outside as well. So all these sessions, they, they are not running just at the v &A because I always thought that it's very important to engage with the communities, with people. So it's a traveling like event in a way. So it's been going to places from Dundee to um, like Sheffield, but also in uh, East London, uh, South London, uh, but also as part of festivals and uh, uh, university events, etc., and also abroad. And um, yeah, and this is a way for like creating a bridge between the a very kind of traditional and formal institution with um, communities of people who make things, create things, invent things, and engineer things. So, so yeah, so if you, uh, if you happen to be in London on the 24th and 25th of September, uh, come to the Open IoT uh, event and um, hope we, we are hoping that people can help us create this sort of like, not manifesto, but maybe like this shared uh, understanding of what we want, you know, the future of like the digital future to be or how we want to use technology. And that's it from me. Thank you.